To start off, I began selecting the photo that I wanted to work with. I wasn't sure about it first, but I chose this one because I also prepared in advance with a little bit of an experiment. I used a candle to try and shape, shape out the general geometry of the of a snake that I wanted to make and I wasn't sure that I was getting the geometry correct but the main advantage of doing this was to actually trying to figure out how a snake would look under the same conditions of light since I didn't like the actual shape that I had uh, in mind when I took the photo I had to sketch out something different and it turns out that shaping a snake is actually pretty hard it is it doesn't come natural to mine so i had to look at some references of uh, how a snake wraps itself onto a body this is one of the images i used after that i created a replica of the broom that i used for the photo shoot this is to create the exact light conditions and next I uh, needed to create a dummy for the model in this case. It doesn't need to be a super correct model at this stage. What you're going to do then is project the texture of the photo onto that geometry so that it generates shadows. Then I had to apply the texture to the finished room and then adding an area light. This is just for EV, just to preview the lighting and in cycles I will turn that area light into a portal light so that the scene is entirely illuminated by indirect lighting. My first approach with modeling the snake was with uh, vertex and a skin modifier but I quickly realized that wasn't the the ideal way to do it this was my second approach using a ring geometry with an array modifier that follows a curve and the advantage of using a curve is that as you can see I have a lot of points I ended up eliminating most of those points just to get a um, more smooth transition of the geometry of the snake. The ring is very easy to work with and you can unwrap it and use it with a procedural shader from a username of BlendSwap. I'm gonna link him in the description. Then I changed the shader of the snake into something that resembled more what I was looking for, something with very small scales and uh, almost like an albino snake. You add some variations and some randomizations to the scales, it's a very powerful and versatile shader. After that I made a quick render just to preview what it will look like into the final composition. This was my first result with the lighting conditions and I thought that it was good enough to continue doing it. Sometimes I fail miserably at trying out these kind of, of things. What I'm going to try out now is actually a pretty old technique for isolating the hair that I learned back in the day. I, I'm pretty sure there's better techniques now for doing this but uh, this is the one I know you basically meddle with the channels until you find something with enough contrast between the hair and the background and then make a mask I had to work some areas to make it look better for the head of the snake I used um, a model I found online of 
of a snake. It was a cobra snake and I had to modify it to fit more the style that I was looking for. This is a very small uh, snake. So I also had to take in mind that the shape of the snake uh, changes depending on the size of it. Then I had to figure out a way to blend it correctly and I used a lot of shape keys and smooth modifiers uh, including a shrink wrap to kind of blend the body with the head. The head in this case has a lot of vertices. This is not ideal so I had to go work it that way. For the spots of the snake, a little bit of texture, I did it manually on Photoshop and I didn't have to be super exact. I just needed to add some shapes and some variances that my reference had. And you can see I added just a little, just a few, just to try it out how it would look in the model, and then I started adding more. The next step was to sculpt the actual snake. Just added a little bit of detail. You can notice that where whatever there's folding of the body, you can see something that resembles the foldings of cloth or something like that. So I had to simulate that. It gives it a little bit extra realism. For the eyes of the snake, I just used a photograph of a snake eye and then give, gave it a little bit of depth. The next step once I thought the snake was ready was to improve just a little bit the background. In this case I wanted to have a, something more magical if you can say. Something that fit more into the mood that I was looking for. And I used the actual room as a base just so I didn't lose the lighting information of the photograph. The next step was to mix it uh, correctly. Right now I didn't use any kind of linear method so the lighting was way off. But I didn't want to waste uh, time with that in Blender because it doesn't have the proper tools for that. So I just had to eyeball it on Photoshop. Uh, what I'm doing here is masking out the areas that I want to keep off the background and then adjusting the, co the exposure and the color. The next step was to edit out some of the facial imperfections. I also changed a little bit of the colors with the curve tools on Capture One. Uh, you can see I'm trying to emulate the curve that I have on the left and then once I got it right where I wa wanted you can see it's a little bit exaggerated then I just set the opacity to something very low. It's barely noticeable. I added some haze which I didn't like quite much. I think I ended up removing it and then some dutch and burn for the skin and the snake and whichever I felt it needed. This is the haze that I ended up with. I felt that the heat exchanger needed a little bit of more shadow.
and this is the result. Thanks for watching.